Hi friends, welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. I'm Jared Haskell here with Mr. Jason McCutcheon. Remotely, of course, very uh, social distanced Mm. at this point uh, in Massachusetts. I'm down in my home in uh, Rhode Island. Um, And I just wanted to say before we kind of get started, guys, make sure that you are checking us out anywhere you can find podcasts or on YouTube. We do it in both places uh, because we're like that and we want you to be able to... um, uh, listen to Wedding Pros or watch Wedding Pros really wherever you are and wherever you're going. And I'd encourage you, especially now through uh, these kind of weird times uh, with COVID-19, uh, check out the Facebook group as well because we're having a lot of discussion on there. We're having a lot of live chats on there as well. Uh, a lot of times we're inviting guests on to kind of see what their experience is um, and just, yeah, learn from one another in kind of a weird we and got, uncertain time. So We got some awesome um, people in that group too. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, Jason and I were saying um, kind of one of the, the uh, biggest things we've noticed about the group is it's a lot of very experienced people in there, um, you know, sprinkled in with some newbies as well. But for the most part, everyone in there is very experienced and has been doing this for a long period of time and is just like master artists. We have like we um, Heish and Alex Douglas and others, Jordan. They're amazing. Yeah. We skew video, Jared and I, but um, in terms of the group that we want to have, we want to make sure it's a lot of different wedding professionals. So it's not a group just for filmmakers. And, and that's just not what we want to build with wedding pros. We want it to be something that's a little more crossing the disciplines. So we got planners in there, photographers, all kinds of people in the wedding industry. So great group. So make sure you're checking it out. And then of course, follow us on all the other socials, Instagram. Uh, we haven't, we, we don't have any Pinterest. I guess that's I guess that's it. Pint, uh, uh, Instagram. We don't use, we don't use Facebook, Twitter. YouTube, Twitter. Yeah, no Twitter. Uh, not yet, at least. I think we got it uh, for the future when when Twitter is reborn out of the ashes of coronavirus. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, we have a we have a great show today, guys. Um, you know, today we're going to be talking about uh, what crisis uh, reveals about your business. Um, And I think this is just an overall business discussion that we're going to be having today. Um, You know, obviously, everyone at at this point in time, um, I'm not sure when you're listening to this podcast, but at this point in time, uh, a lot of questions are being asked about agreements, about the way businesses are just structured in general, uh, creative business businesses, especially. So uh, we're going to be talking through a couple of those items today. It's going to be great. Yeah. So. Obviously, coronavirus is a national crisis. It's way bigger than weddings, and so we we um, <clears throat> we understand that. But it was one of those things where we we're like, let's just keep going with what we're doing, and, and let's let's not end our lives just because of coronavirus. In terms of, um, we are wedding professionals, and we love weddings, and 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 so the, I think what I'm seeing that's relevant to our industry right now, in terms of the discussion for today, is like. Not only is it a health crisis, but it's it's a it's a financial crisis, and it particularly hits hard the events industry because the events industry is all about gathering people, right? It's like yep. there's literally you can't do weddings during coronavirus. Maybe I guess you no. can do some small elopements, but in general, it's gonna be knocking out ninety five percent or more of weddings in your market if you're especially if you're in one of the hard hit markets we are in massachusetts um rhode island connecticut and so we're kind of getting hit pretty hard with coronavirus out here and we're in the thick of it so one of the things though that's positive is that you learn a lot about your business and you learn a lot about your business through crisis and i think this is just a life skill if you are um, any kind of person who wants to grow right you're looking at what <clears throat> what is crisis and challenges reveal about me and about myself? You know, that's how relationships work. It's how self-development and growth works. And it's also really how, um, I think it's how cr- your business works too. And coronavirus, this crisis, I think is revealing a lot of things to people about their business that they maybe haven't wanted to look at for a while. Right. Totally. Yep. Totally. I mean, being a creative, uh, we talk about it a lot. I mean, your first inclination isn't to talk about contracts. I mean, it sure isn't for me, even still when we want to talk about it on the podcast, I'm like, 
uh, okay. <laughs> um, but it's super important. Obviously, like something like this pops up and it's like your whole business hinges on being prepared, right? And, uh, and having a very legitimate business. So I'm excited, um, you know, to, to talk through some things. I mean, obviously we're here right now. Um, and, and now you're kind of limited as to what you can actually do. Um, but setting up yourself to be prepared for anything really, um, is the thing that's going to, um, ensure that your business survives through a crisis like this. But, um, I'm excited because I, I think this is, there's a lot of negativity out there. Like, you know, this is terrible. You know, I've seen some people that are like, this is a thing that's going to push me over out of the industry and all this stuff. And, um, you know, I think there's a certain, there's a couple different types of people right now in, in kind of the, the industry, I guess you could say, um, you know, the people that are just like super downheartened, depressed about this, you know, a lot of people, especially up here in New England, you know, you have seasonal depression and you're just coming off of that into spring thinking things are going to be great. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, coronavirus, and you're not going to be working the rest of the year. And like, that's brutal on a lot of people. So I'm seeing a lot of, you know, people being like, this is devastating. I'm not going to do well out of this. Um, but then I think there's the, the people that see every opportunity, um, as such, as an opportunity, right, um, to really come out of this thing um, like a cannon, right, and and seeing opportunity to grow your business through um, uh, crisis, as opposed to um, just kind of dribble out of crisis well, and just survive the crisis. So uh, hopefully, this c discussion can also set you up to come out of uh, you know this global pandemic um ready to go and firing yeah. on all cylinders i mean there's a lot of downtime and so all we can do is work on our businesses and and this is what right. i always say yep. like the most real part about your business is actually not the photography or the video because we've gotten that taken away from us right now and you still have your brand you still have marketing and sales right you still have contracts and legal things. You still have a CPA, financial things. We have to go, should I get unemployment? Should I, like all these, that's the only thing that's real now. Mm -hmm. yep. Not, not, yep. Like you don't get to go shoot photos of brides and grooms anymore. That's like a yeah. perk. Like when we get to go do that again, I mean, that's going to be amazing. We get to go shoot again. Yeah. I don't have to deal with this crap, but I'm telling people all the time, like first things first, right? And like you have to deal with the part of your business that actually is the most real and the like <clears throat> in which is all this stuff. So I think we, we kind of identified before this, like three things that this is revealing for people, three areas. I think that the coronavirus crisis is really putting a huge spotlight on and revealing to somebody like, do you have like a well set up business, a real business or something, or is this just like a hobby? Um, Brandon Wong said it on the podcast from Photo Booth Supply Co., which you should go check that podcast out. But um, he said, like, a lot of people, they don't have a business, they have a job. Hmm. And that really means, like, you just go to your business, the same, you go to your job, same as you would go work at, you know, a pizza place or an office. You clock in, you clock out. And you get paid when you go to work, which is shooting. But when you have a business and you're a CEO and you're a president and you're running your business, it's actually just like it's a full time thing. And the business takes care of you, you know. And I think one of the cool things that we've always looked at with our own um, business, we've always wanted it to be like that. I think we've worked really hard to set up Stop Go Love and High Sales Media Incorporated, which is our parent company that we own, of course, it's not some, but one of the reasons we've set that up that way is because we've wanted to, um, have something that took care of us that allow us to retire, that would allow us to, um, really run real businesses. A lot of people I think are realizing in the middle of this situation though, that like they actually don't really have a well set up business. Their contract sucks. They are a sole prop. And so luckily, by the way, the sole prop thing isn't as big of a deal because now they're letting gig we gig workers claim unemployment. But yeah, until the, like... The bill that came out yesterday. I mean, what is that, yep. yesterday or whatever? Yep. Those people were screwed. 
right? Yep. And 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 then of um, just different, all these different situations where they or they've just never thought about it. You know, maybe they're they just don't even know how to handle certain situations. And I think one of the things it's not just contracts or how's your business set up, but it's also like how is your emotional like state set up? Like what is your view of your clients and what is your like way of evaluating these things? And people like are getting into these situations where they literally are too uncomfortable. They lack all confidence to actually do what is right for their business because they've never thought about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm seeing. And I think like, so like today we're going to just kind of go through these things that we've seen kind of revealed and hopefully they'll be helpful to you. So I think the first thing that um, we're seeing that a crisis will reveal about your business is, are you set up correctly? And and this is like your legal structure, all this stuff. Um, one of the things that we're the most, we just, I don't really know why we decided to do, why did we decide to become an S Corp? Um, I think we decided because you said we should be an S Corp. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> and then we looked into it and we we're like, all right, well, I guess that seems, I, I feel like it was someone that we talked to early on that was like, well, you should probably be an S Corp because we had three partners. Uh, no, the three not, at the not at the beginning. We were an S Corp. You and I personally. Oh yeah, that's right. When we first started Stop Go Love, we were, we were an S Corp, um, yeah, I think it was because we wanted to be a corporation, but we didn't want to be a C corp. And I think honestly, I think I think, with a... I think it was literally just I wanted to be a corporation because I thought it was cool to have a corporation. <laughs> and then I looked into it, it yeah. and it's a C corp wasn't possible. But they were like, you could do an S corp, and I was like, yeah, do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I and I do remember reading like, oh, like it, it will be better if I get sued. I didn't even yeah. know all the financial potential, like potential financial benefits, the yeah. concept of like pay, you know, being an employee of my own company. Um, yeah. the, the, I think the more compelling reasons to do it, um, yep. being a shareholder, all that stuff. So, yep. so I think, um, in general, like, are you set up correctly, um, legally as a, or like, is your business structure set up correctly? And I think for us, we, pretty much realized, and I'm not saying everyone has to be an escort, by the way, but for our goals and what we wanted, um, it was the right move. And as this situation developed early on, like before the last law got passed where they were like, I know some people don't even have their business set up at all, by the way, like they're not, mm -hmm. they're not even a business. They're basically filing a self-employed or something. Um, and we, from a tax standpoint, as um, this kind of thing started rolling out from the government, we're asking ourselves like, okay, we have employees. We have, if you don't know, we have nine employees, including Jared and I. And, and so this situation for us hits really close because we're one of those people that if we don't figure our stuff out, we, are, we have to figure out, do we have to keep people hired? And how can we make this good for everybody? And so we started looking into it and early on and we're like, okay, we're, we're an S corp. Everyone's getting a W two people could file for unemployment if we had to, or we can, oh, we can get this aid that's coming. Like there's all these things that were set up and we had a lot of options very early on. So we didn't panic as the uh, situation was developing because we knew that the laws were being made with the idea in mind that this is for companies and, and people like that. But I've heard, seen a lot of people, Jared, who, are getting like uh, no aid and they didn't like the situ like this has revealed that they're actually not really set up very well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually, even before the crisis, um, kind of horrified to see how many people are set up as sole proprietors. And I think when they first see like sole proprietor, the word they're like, well, that's probably me because I'm going to be operating my business by myself. I think that's the, the, the bucket that most creatives kind of fall into, it makes the most sense. But if you were to do a little bit of reading on it, you actually realize that sole proprietorship um, doesn't really protect your personal assets like an S Corp, like an LLC would. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing probably for us as being an S Corp is we, that's one of the things I remember early on learning was like, hey, 
if you know one of my shooters or myself was to drop a camera on some grandma's head and she died god forbid knock on wood you know um then they couldn't come after my car at the time my my 2000 toyota camry they can't come after my, uh, that my car um and uh and i was like okay that, i guess that makes the most sense and I, I thought that was really it um but then over time we realized like hey this the way that we're currently structured is actually has a bunch of different reasons oh yeah i mean um we could that, literally that sell like, shares oh of our God. business and raise capital like yep like yep. you can't you sell shares that, that of yourself the best way to be structured <laughs> yep <laughs> you know yeah. so, and i think that's what it is is like a lot of people they view their they like oh i'm running a business but it's really they're they're just working a job and they yeah. they, they think of themselves as the business but the brand is bigger than you even if the brand happens to be your name it's still a brand it's yeah. still a brand. It's still not you. And, and and I think a lot of people are in a situation where let's even do worst case scenario, right? You have a bunch of credit card bills um, for your business that you're running. I'm not saying that's bad. Maybe you bought a bunch of new gear like in January and you have payments on this gear and you're like, oh, I got tons of money coming in, right? Everything's going to be great. Um, and then... You know, you have all these situations that end up happening with coronavirus, and then suddenly you can't pay back that those loans because, and they're in your name because you're a sole prop, and and then you know you can't pay your bills, all these things, and you're and you can't file for unemployment possibly because you're self-employed, and like Jay, listen, listen to this. I was on a call yesterday, right, with with uh, planners. Actually, it was it was a big kind of summit for for uh, wedding planners, wedding photographers, videographers, uh, caterers, all that stuff for Vermont. And one lady was saying that she's heard of people having to take out loans to be able to pay back deposits for people. Oh, yeah. Like the, to give the money back because their their contracts aren't set up right. So they're having to take out loans, go into debt to pay off the money that they've already taken, they've already spent you know, for just regular operation of their business. It's insane, man. Well, like, and it's, it's like, like the desperation, the desperation that it puts you in when you aren't set up properly. Um, mm -hmm. And like, you know, having, this is what, if you don't, I mean, I think most people know what this means, but if you don't know what it means, LSE means limited liability corporation. It limits your liability. And, and that basically just is, all we're trying to do. And so I don't mind saying this, Jared, like I don't see why anyone is set up as a sole prop. Yeah, that like, I, I would totally agree there. And any, based on the books that I've read about it, I, I would totally agree that I, I don't think anyone should be set up as a sole prop because it opens the door for people to pursue you personally. So yeah. why, why the heck would you ever want that? If you default, you can be, an, you can be a sole, sole operator and own an LLC. So why don't you just do that? Like if it's really just a question of like, it's more money to set it up. It's only going to be, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I can't imagine it being more than $500 to set up an LLC versus a sole prop it might even be the same. So like if you can't afford that $500, I mean, you're not really looking to run well, a business. I mean, let's this be honest, is, I think right? what I've heard some people doing. Some people don't want to be above board with how they pay themselves and sure it, and so it, it's much easier to be shady you're like a gas station who only accepts cash and yeah. everyone hates you a little bit <laughs> yes that's true it's much easier to be shady i think and that's that's really what it comes down to is like if if you now if you are sole prop and you are paying into unemployment for yourself you know you're not or maybe, and I think sole props, I forgive me if I'm ignorant here. I, I, I'm actually, I've never even looked into it because I've seen the liability and I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't even need to know about it. But um, maybe you're self-employed and you're not issuing yourself a W a W poo, <laughs> a W2. And, um, and, and so like, you know, cause then you don't want to have to pay employment tax. And uh, cause like, even if you're paying yourself, you have to pay the government unemployment tax as a corporation and you have to, so you're getting double taxed basically. And then yep. you have to pay taxes. Okay. People don't want to do that. I, 
you still should be putting that money aside because right now, because we're putting into unemployment as a company, if we all just had to like fire ourselves and, and basically get paid by the government, you know? So it's like, even it, if, at the very least, if you're running a, some kind of business that doesn't protect you, at least put money aside that you would have been paying into taxes. Um, sure. At yep. least do that for me because at least you'll know like in a situation like this, you'll have the money put aside and you'll be able to weather the storm. Um, and we have money. Yeah. And I mean, everyone thinks that way. Everyone's like, well, I'll have more money, right? If I if I don't do things this way, I'll, I'll, you know, the money that you're saving, oh yeah, I'll put that money away. But you never do. You always no. spend it. So it's like, why not just do things the right way? You know, force years. That, that that's why Social Security exists. It's because people don't want to save for retirement. So that <laughs> the government's like, no, you're going to save for retirement. Well, I mean, Social Security is probably a bad example because it's gonna suck. Because it's gonna we'll go away. That. But <laughs> yeah, but because of that's why it was created. Because it was like all these old people, you know, will never save money for their retirement. So we're gonna force them to do it. It's essentially doing the same thing. It's like forcing you to have to think about your future as opposed to leaving it up to you because let's face it, like we all suck at. <laughs> I just think uh, like doing, not things... all of us suck at saving, but uh, you know, as a, a, a property of the universe, I think we would rather spend than save. So doing things the easy way is better than the hard way. I'd rather spend money and have more convenience than, and this is just, I don't think it's just me. I think as a business owner, you start to realize the value of time and the value yeah. of um, less choices and how decision yeah. fatigue starts to hit you. And like everything, I'm just adding more and more things. And so S Corp has simplified it for us and we just know we're safe. And and this crisis is maybe like, oh, okay. I, every time a news brief comes out, I know I'm gonna be um, covered and handled and I'm not gonna lose my house, all this good yep. stuff. So, so one of the things that keeps hap coming up with a lot of these bailout bills and a lot of these things is basically like, they're going to pay you um, your salary. You know, they'll cover salaries. Um, now, I'm sure you can easily prove that if you aren't paying yourself a salary, you could probably figure out some way of showing them that you get paid X or Y. But I can tell you, like, that's the other thing I've been noticing is, like, I'm so glad we set it up the way we do. or an S-Corp. Me and you are employees of the company, and we pay ourselves a salary. A, because I have a fixed uh, amount that's a fixed draw every month. And so I can plan and I can go, okay, this is how much I need to pay everyone. And so it's just a little easier for me. And second, I can much easier go and say, hey, this is my salary for the next three months. Here's from my payroll company, you know, especially with this new bill from the house that's coming out mm -hmm. where they're going to basically give you no repayment loans to cover your salaries. I'm just going to send them to, to, to my payroll company and say, this is how much we pay. Please give me yep. this much. And you know, we'll see how it goes. But, but cause I mean, and we don't want to, we're not experts by the way, with this bill and these bailouts and all these different things. I'm yeah. not saying it's everyone should be doing. I'm not recommending literally that. came out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not recommending all that stuff. There's probably some double edged swords with all that too. What I am saying though, is having clarity is what's important and knowing what your options are is good. And paying yourself as an employee will a, you won't just spend your money when you make more than your salary. Like you're people who don't have a salary, like they make 150 grand that year. They pay themselves 150 grand basically. If they make 110, they pay themselves 110. That's not how our business works. Our business is if we make like 800K or a million dollars, we're going to pay ourselves the same salary. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. Right. And then, yeah. of course, we can. That, that's, that's one of the first things that, that we decided, and, and you and I were always on the same page about, is we were always like, you know, we're going to pay ourselves a set salary. If we make more money than we thought we were going to, we're still going to pay ourselves this salary. So there's no like, Oh, I hope I make more money so I can buy this house. It's like, no, I'm going to plan this whole year around the salary that I'm currently making. And if the company makes more money, I'm just going to invest it back into the company. We're going to buy more gear. We're going to buy enough gear so that next year we can send out 
another team. I'm going to train someone up and build this business. Like that's something we decided early. And, you know, again, that might not be for everyone. Um, but at the end of the year, you know, you can, if you can show that you have a little bit of profit and then you can spend it on something very specific, a lot of people on here listening to this are gearheads. That's when you can decide, Hey, I'm going to actually spend on a newer camera, you know, and, and maybe, you know, if it's a part of your business plan, you know, you can splurge on something you want. Well, um, I'm not saying you do that, <laughs> but I just get, that's the way you actually do it. I get know? so tired of people. Every They make comment. They'll make a recommendation. That's good advice, but it'll always preface it like, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not a CPA, but. <laughs> and you're like, duh. Um, but second of all, just because you're not a lawyer or CPA doesn't mean you can't tell somebody, here's a good thing you should do obviously talk to a lawyer and a CPA. I'm not, I am not a lawyer or a CPA. Okay. There we've established that, but I am telling yeah. you if you are set up as an us corp and you're a creative and you pay yourself a salary and it's conservative, it's low. A that's good because you learn to live off less and that's good for you as a person. Second, if you make a lot more than that, and you're a shareholder, you can distribute that and you won't get taxed less. So that's the other level. As thing. an S that corporation, has, that has nothing to do with this crisis, but it is a perk. And I'm just, I'll always sing the praises of setting yourself up as yeah. a shareholder of your own company because yeah. it gives you way more options to how to make money, raise money, and distribute money. And, yeah. and, and to <laughs> your point about not being a lawyer, um, you know, what we've learned over the last couple of years, this this last year and a half, two years, we, we hired a, a legitimate lawyer uh, and a, um, a, C, a, a great CPA that we were um, very comfortable with. Before we had this person that was a little bit more like wishy-washy and, you know, you could never get in touch with them until it was tax season. And, you know, since we have um, spent a little bit more money on those things, um, we the thing that we've realized um, is you can they ask you what you want. It's not just like there's one way to do lawyering or you know accounting. It's what the heck do you want to do with this? Like what what are your goals yeah. as a, as an employee? So like you know talking about like yeah we're not lawyers, but if we can talk about what good business principles are and how to actually protect ourselves, these are the things that you would bring to the lawyer or to your CPA and then say like. Hey, this, these are yeah. things that these are our goals. You know, what can we do to make these happen? And they can give you good legal advice about what's legal, what's illegal. You know, where that line is, and um, yeah. So that that's kind of well, and also learned. like I would highly recommend it. You're everyone. just it saves you thousands of dollars. He'll be like, look, you know your industry way better than I do about weddings specifically. What are some things that? What are some problem areas that you can see coming down the pipe? So you know. It's, I think a lot of people see like a lawyer as like, well, just protect me, right? Like just create a document that will protect me. Um, not knowing that something that's important to me is that, you know, I have exclusive rights to make whatever video or whatever photography, whatever creative um, thing that I want to. Like that's what I want in my agreement that, well, hey, you're buying me, mm -hmm. you're buying my vision. I'm going to create that for you. And if you don't like that, in the in the agreement, I'm protected by that. My yeah. lawyer wouldn't know that unless I had told him that. Like, hey, this is a problem that I can see in the future. Protect me from it. Yeah. So you have to bring stuff to the table. You have to do a lot yeah. of work in a lot of cases to bring to your lawyer. Um, I think that's probably some people's frustration with lawyers. It's like, well, what am I paying you for? But at the end of the day, you know, you're you paying them so that if the agreement gets things. made and you get sued about the agreement, that they get sued. Yep. <laughs> Yep. You're, exactly. That's the same reason exactly. you're also paying. Here's the, let me give you a business secret. The real point of your setting your business up is that you can never get sued and you're not in trouble for anything. So, yeah. so my, I'm not going to give any money back. If I get, if my taxes are done wrong, my CPA is going to get sued. If my legal stuff is done wrong, my lawyer is going to get in trouble. I am giving away liability on every one of these areas. My insurance company, yeah. they're going to pay if one of my guys drops a camera on someone's head. Like w that's what I'm trying to do is protect myself when yep. I go out yep. and I render a service. So that leads me, I think to the next thing that this crisis reveals. The second thing is your contract 
and how good your contract really is. <laughs> we were, um, we, we've been doing this for 10 years or whatever. And so I went back and I pulled up our 2013 contract. And so we're going to yeah, look at that a little that bit versus our modern contract. But I think one of the things you're seeing now is a lot of people, you're seeing a lot of contract talk and a lot of it's really positive, right? People just, um, maybe exploring it, talking about it, sharing ideas in a really good way. That's been really encouraging to me, Jared. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, I agree too. Um, it's, it's been interesting. Like I think anytime, even our lawyer was like, Hey, we're going to have to tweak some things on, on the agreement. Here's, here's an updated version. You know, I think it's a time where we're all like, crap, what do we actually have written in this thing? <laughs> and like, what's good, what's bad, what protects me in this case? Oh, I bet a lot you of know, people what's are a redoing related their case that I could be screwed in. Yeah. What was that? I said, I bet a lot of people are doing the same thing, redoing their agreements. Hopefully. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we talked to our, our guy, Mark Spooner photography. He was on the podcast and he was telling me like he redid almost his entire agreement based on, based on this, uh, this, this, uh, um, current, um, yeah, crisis. So it's, uh, yeah, it, I think it's a time where a lot of us are, are looking at it and we're either like, yeah, we're protected, but we could be more protected or, I'm not protected at all. I have to find a way to be protected. So the next time, you know, I'm, I'm a little yeah. bit more safe. So, yeah. So certainly. what should people, what's like, what should people be really looking at with their contract and what's some of the things you're kind of seeing that, um, people should, that you're, that kind of alarm you about some people's agreements. Yeah. So I think, um, the point of your agreement and I think a good, an agreement, a good agreement will, um, always be super strict you'll always kind of um be a little bit more um powerful like i know we have a good agreement because we get asked questions about our agreement a lot like hey what does this mean you know can you clarify on this um i don't i don't see this kind of clause in your agreement and a lot of times the people that are asking us those things are lawyers oh yeah <laughs> shoot for a lot of lawyers, lawyers and a lot of doctors. lawyers hate our agreement yeah, so they'll say, you know, can we change this or that? And I'm usually like, no, we don't change the agreement kind of thing. There might be certain things. If they make a good point on like, and, th you know, that's another thing is like, I've had clients reach out and be like, hey, you know, we're thinking that the language here is, I understand what you're, you're, do you're, you're trying to do, but the language is a little bit strong here. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you're right. Like the intention of the agreement is, isn't to do the way that it's currently stated. But then I can bring that to Shane, our uh, lawyer, and he'll go in and he'll be like, oh yeah, like let's tweak that a little bit to make it so that, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're strict, guy, but it's you know, not like we're totally inflexible. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Um, we but listen. For the most part, yeah, we're, we're not very flexible on the agreement, but, um, and people will still go with us, by the way. Yeah, people, um, that's the thing, everyone. What I'm seeing is like, maybe you're going to get into this, but like people are changing their agreements, right? Or they're not standing by their agreements. And if they would have just yeah. stood by their agreement, the person would have said yeah. yes. So this is a little, probably a little bit of a side rant and, and I'll probably go pretty hard in the paint about just what people are, what I'm seeing people currently do with their agreement is even though they are protected, they're still giving the money away kind of thing. And it's like, well, you know, there's a bunch of solutions besides just giving money away, guys. It's like that you can, you can, if you're being proactive instead of reactive, provide solutions for people outside of just giving money away. Like you're protected. There's a reason why, you know, you created an agreement that was, you know, good. And it's for instances like this. And so, you know, I, I think a lot of people are like, oh, good customer service is just giving deposits. Or back. like you're. A Honestly, bad person, like, if, like yeah, oh, you don't care about you're people a bad in this person crisis or whatever. The the more that I do this, the more that I realize that um, good customer service is often um, hearing your clients and and serving your clients really well. Um, but a lot of times, you can make your clients' interests what your interests are, right? By being proactive, by being like, you know. If you, I, th I really think if you allow your clients enough time to face a certain, you know, uh, scenario, that's a negative scenario, and you don't proactively see what their needs are and say, hey, I see this coming in the future. Um, here are some solutions that you can currently 
pursue, we're happy to help you with that. Um, you know, they'll come up with their own solutions if you don't provide the solutions for them. So a lot of times I think people are right now are saying, you know, shoot, like, uh, I don't know what to do with this certain scenario. They're kind of paralyzed. Um, and so a couple will be like, Hey, we're going to cancel our wedding or we're going to postpone our wedding. We want the deposit back. And then when you're already in that conversation, um, you're like, you, you're forced to be the bad guy. You're either going to say, sure and give the money away and then i still think you're a bad guy because you're leaving your family vulnerable for giving that money away i think you're a worse person who you just or... don't follow your own word you literally yeah. signed yeah. an agreement about it yeah uh, you know or you're forced to say no i'm not going to do that and then here are the other options if you're being proactive and you're saying hey these are the solutions they'll pursue those like i have a client right now who reached out they're a july it's it's uh Currently, what's the date? April 27th today? Uh, or I'm sorry, March 27th. They're saying they're postponing their July wedding. And I said, okay, that's totally fine. You know, here's our solution to that right now. And they're like, great. We're talking to the venue this week. I'll let you know. Instead of allowing them to get to uh, allowing. Okay, us let, to get so, to so let's pause like, really quick because you're bringing up a really good point, which is um, that a good agreement allows you to actually provide good customer service. And a lot of people view it the other way, right? It's like, oh, I have this strict agreement. That's bad for my customers. But in our case, yeah. the, the strict agreement has allowed us to um, go above and beyond for our customers. Um, so we have this agreement that really protects us, right? And they know it. And when we made this agreement, we made it basically with the idea in mind that we have employees or running a company and we never, ever, ever want to be giving money back. Because if a yeah. situation like this happened and we have to give back, you know, 80 grand and, and this isn't a brag or whatever, but we have, we have about 90 grand committed to us by clients in the next two months. Imagine yeah. if we had to pay that back. Yeah, we'd be screwed. We would be screwed. And so like, and everyone would be, and, and that's why it's ridiculous. A lot of people, it's easy for them when they're only talking about three grand and they're not thinking about it. What if this scaled, right? Or what if they were charging like 15 grand for weddings and then they had five weddings, they had to get back $35,000 and they, it's just crazy. Yep. You can't do it. So the agreement was very strict because we knew this isn't going to work. Um, and so we set it up to protect us. And now we're able to um, go above and beyond and the client knows it because they look at the yep. agreement and then what we did was we were very proactive, like you said. And so let's talk through what we did because we had an agreement that protected us and the clients knew it that made them also, not only did they not get, have to, not only did we not have to pay them money back, but we also were able to give them a great customer experience by serving them and being proactive. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're right. I think having a really strict and good agreement, it kind of, um, you know, the agreement is gospel. That's that's the truth, right? That's the thing that you're going to start the conversation at is just like, it's a law. well, this is what we have to do, which is nothing. We don't have to do anything for you, <laughs> essentially. Um, you want your contract to be the jerk and then you want yourself to be the advocate, right? Like I'm a customer service person. I'm your advocate. I'm going to help you through this. Even though this nasty old agreement says this, the agreement that I created... <laughs> says this thing, this is what I'm willing to do for you. So it just sets you up for a win. Um, that is also a win for you too. It's not just a win for the couple that's like, hey, you know, we're faced with this terrible situation. You know, what can I come up with that's a solution to it? You're like, you're essentially creating the solution for them. Well, and everybody's happy. Um, that's the thing is like, yeah, everybody's happy. And that's the goal. They feel served. I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, like listening at home, like every single person that I've talked to that I've said, we can't do a refund, essentially. And, and I don't even say it like that, by the way. Um, but uh, we can't do a refund. But here's what we can do. We're open on these dates. I'm willing to reschedule you guys, you know, no extra charge. Like, you know, we want to work with you guys. You guys pick any date here. Like, and there's a ton of dates. So you're giving people endless options, essentially. Um, except for the ones that you're not willing to give up. Uh, and, and yeah, then they're like, everyone who I've talked to has been so happy. Well, well like, break it down for so people for really quick. What we did, cause we had basically a campaign around. Sure. This. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and we talked about it a little bit in the Facebook group, uh, some of the chats that we've had, but, um, but.
but I don't think we've talked about it on no, the podcast. I think it's worth kind of going over. So essentially when uh, everything first started coming out and, and we were like, crap, every, the industry is in trouble. Um, we talked to Natalie Denice and she uh, would talk to you and, and kind of talk through a game plan of, about being proactive, um, about getting in front of this and talking to your clients about what some solutions are. Um, and there were some really great people along the way, you know, I'm not going to take full credit for some of the things that we've implemented. Um, Mark Spooner. No, we, we, we're always website. asking people you should too. Oh yeah. And, and, and that, I mean, that's the whole point of wedding pros is we want people to take the best ideas and then implement it to their own business. But, um, but someone like Mark Spooner created a website talking about, you know, Mark's reaction to, um, COVID-19 and, and what people can do, what some of their solutions are. Um, he sent them out to all of his clients. Um, and he mentioned that he had gotten good response out of it. Um, and so we kind of did the same. Uh, we first reached out to all of our May couples. Um, April automatically reached out to us once the whole situation started brewing. Um, all April brides reached out and were like, hey, we're thinking we, this might be something we might have to do. And we were like, we were a little bit more reactionary. We we're like, okay, I guess like this is kind of out of our hands right now. We have to really do this. Well, and the, so the situation we is still them. fluid anyway. So we're all yeah. just reacting. Yeah, it is. But anyway. Yeah, it is. But uh, but we were lucky. All of our April, you know, brides rescheduled the days that were friendly to us anyway. So we, we were lucky there. Um, and then May, we were a little bit more proactive. We reached out to all of our May couples and said, hey, this is, you know, what we can do. Essentially, we can't, you know, you can cancel, but you're... Um, uh, first deposit would be forfeited. Um, I didn't even say that necessarily. Well, let's, we just let me be like, really hey. specific at what we did. We sent out an yeah. email to all our yep. April brides and May brides. We had a website on or a web page on our website with all the policies where we outlined three solutions, <clears throat> one for non prime days where we would let them reschedule for free one for prime days where we would let them schedule for a small fee that would allow us to cover the overhead cost of the switch. Um, and then basically told them, look, we're not doing really any reschedulings past this day in 2021. And so if you need to do that, you have to basically pay for an entire new wedding and forfeit your agreement. Yeah. And then we also made a video that we yep. explained to them. So, so we gave people a whole full court press of customer service. And it was yep. professional looking and it was heartfelt. And it was important that to do the video for us too, because we wanted them to hear us say it, not just read it. We wanted people yep. to see a tone of voice and feel a human connection so that they don't feel like you're just, and I would say, this isn't just my opinion. When you're dealing with bad news, um, you probably want to do your very best to make a human connection. Like bad Definitely. news does better on video, on the phone. Good news is fine in an email. Now, sometimes yep. you're going to do bad news on an email too, but we knew in this particular situation that it was important for us to be kind of a calming influence. And so we did all that stuff. Jared sent all this out and then, you know, he had all the conversations and people felt that, I mean, that's good customer service right there objectively like they got yeah. a, a whole range of solutions we thought about it all for them we gave them the tools and like don't assume anyone else is giving your clients tools to help them make decisions right now don't assume it yeah. we assumed that they probably weren't um and so we gave them all the tools <clears throat> to yeah. know and so for some people they might have been like uh, we like you told me earlier someone rescheduled to thursday maybe they wouldn't have yeah. done that if we wouldn't have told them oh yeah it's free go ahead and do it yeah gave them yeah. options with their venue, it gave them options with all the people involved. And we were like th maybe the catalyst for the whole entire change in the thing. And it, yeah. and it's what worked for us. A lot of people, you know, if you're, there's a bunch of different types of videographers out there, but you know, usually if you're a videographer, excuse me, um, and you work with wedding planners, they're probably going to be the first point of contact, but how many people out there really have a wedding planner working for them, like percentage wise? It's gonna be a low percentage. So if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, a lot of times, even before the venue, you'll probably reach out. Yesterday, I, I was on a, um, a Zoom call and talking to all these venues and the venues honestly are just as freaked out as the photographers, the videographers, you know, calligraphy people, like 
they don't know what to do. And venues are actually in a place where it's probably a lot harder because they can't just have a photographer videographer fill in for them on a very specific day. They have an actual physical place that can only hold one wedding a day yep. in a lot of cases. Yep. So they're like, we don't have as many, you know, we can't be as, as Oh, they can pretty much say, get married on a Tuesday. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're, they're freaked out. They're, they're, they're they don't really know what to do. Which they're is going to really, be good for all of us, by the way, just as an aside, like yeah. if, if what ends up happening is that all our weddings move to non prime days, that is the least bad solution. Worst case, yeah. like yeah. that's the best. Hopefully, that's what ends up happening. Um, yep. So essentially, having a good having a good agreement at the end of the day, and having a good response to um, to crisis, I think, just encourages people to do more what more of what you want. My hope is that people are going to get married on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And that we're going to see more weddings in yeah. November, December, yep. January. And that's for us February, with our with, March. with our region. Some people's regions aren't seasonal the way ours is. Like us yep. doing weddings in sure. November is like we will maybe do like two. Yeah, and those we, are those are gold. Those are just like free great money. opportunities. I love those weddings because yep. it's like we're not maxed out, you know, during those times. If you can fill those times up, um, so you know, and a lot of people. You know, you got to realize too, a lot of people won't, that won't be their initial thought is like, we, oh, we'll just reschedule until November. You know, they're going to think of November, especially in our area. November is like crummy weather. It's colder, you know, and you know, we're, it's not going to probably be ideal for them to reschedule for November. But um, if they know that it's going to save them money. Yeah, I can give you 2000 reasons why you should do June, it. Yeah. As opposed to June of 2021. Then they might be like incentivized to do so. So all you're doing here is you're incentivizing people to pick days that are going to be convenient for the yeah. whole wedding. But that industry. starts with your contract. That starts with having a totally. contract that totally. protects you. Because if your contract doesn't protect you at all, they're gonna be like, "Screw you! I'm gonna do what I yeah. want. Why the heck should I listen yep. to you?" And so let's talk yep. about our agreement because our old agreement really sucked. Like, yeah, we we're just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> it really sucked. And so like. And, and we want to kind of like show you guys stuff like this because we don't want you to be thinking that we're like all high and mighty and like we just know everything because we know through pain. And we also know like a bad, you can run a good business on a bad agreement for a really long time. And it just like we had this terrible agreement for like years and it never hurt us. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we, if, if this crisis hit now, or, or back then in 2013, when this agreement, you know, was, oh was in place for us, we would be hosed, dude. We'd be out of business. We would be screwed. And so the, like, we're, there's some interesting parts about this. Uh, yep. So this is our agreement. You know, it basically says like, hey, we're going to deliver these services. And, and I'm going to go ahead and like, we'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and just put a PDF of this on our somewhere if you really want to read this oh, crappy man. agreement <laughs> but Great. but it says all videos are deliverable via custom stop go love flash drive in both high res 1080 hu talks h.264 files and web ready files which you know both are web ready but full menu tvts are available upon request at a hundred dollars which I'm, no i wouldn't even do that for less than five hundred dollars now ever i i would think yeah. I would, there'd be no amount of money that would, i would burn a dvd for someone <laughs> Anyway, so we go through, we talk about what they're going to get, and we would change this agreement every time, by the way. So it was a total pain. This was pre-HoneyBook. Um, and then we had a revision policy in there. So we encourage our clients to watch and review all videos and photos upon arrival. Stop will allow a two-week period for a cl client to review all footage and photos and make correction requests. Listen, to that. This is crazy. These corrections are limited to spelling mistakes, DVD menu errors, audio syncing errors with video, and corrupted or broken files. Acceptable client revisions do not include color correction for photo, video, or any additional uh, creative edits. So like I'm glad we said that, but it's like I can't believe we had the guts to tell people don't tell me how to edit my film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, Which now we kind of say that, but we just say it in a lot fancier way. Yes, in, in a way that actually protects you. Um. Um. So the, the thing that I noticed about this agreement, so we have this whole part called fine print, which I thought was so funny. Just the verbiage it, of fine print. This is the fine print. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's not. Uh, it's not written by a, a lawyer. And. 
And a lot of the fine print is just description of what our services are. It's just like, yeah, this is what a ceremony edit is. It is not this. And it's like, <laughs> so if you take away all of that, if you take away all the description parts, you're really left with like three, four lines. Clauses. Yeah, like two. Or, I think we just added things because we we're like, well, contracts have a lot in there, so we need to like just add a lot yeah, of things to yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the deposit. We're, we're part. lucky nowadays where people have a lot of more resources than we did when we first started in like 2012, 2013, like around that time. I don't even know if we had an agreement in like 2000. No, no, I, I had an agreement yeah. very early on. Every one of our. Yeah. I mean, we at least did that. So, but it says. Yeah. So yeah. this is the part where if where I'm like looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, we would have been screwed right now. So first of all, we're, yeah. we're, we are using the word deposit, which I know a lot of people are like, that's bad now because yeah. it means they're paying for the deliverable. And I will say yeah. like a contract should make very clear that you are buying my time. You're not buying my product. And yeah. that's one of the things we wanted to change with and make our new contract say is like, you're buying the right to have me there instead of me be somewhere else. <clears throat> yep. So this is what it says. For if there, if the, if for any reason this contract must be terminated by your party with ni- within ninety days of the event, Stock Club Love reserves the right to retain a hundred percent of the deposit. If the cancellation is made before ninety days of the event, Stop Club Love will refund fifty percent of the deposit. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why did we say that? <laughs> and if Stop Club Love is unable to perform the services agreed upon, Stop Club Love will refund the entirety of the client deposit. That's literally as vague as it is so like they could say like oh you can't shoot this because of the law so give me 100 percent of my deposit back yeah you can't shoot it because uh where we were going to do the ceremony is swampy now and so we can't do the ceremony so give me my money back yep whatever they can fill in the blank yep it, it's just it's opens just you up crazy to tons of exposure so yeah so now what does our agreement say jared for that uh, i don't have it in front of me but essentially it says if you pay us uh, you you will never see that money again. It actually says, you, the client by signing this agreement recognizes that Stocko Love is basically chosen to do this and not this other thing, and so they they foregone other, other opportunities, yeah. and so none of your money yeah. will be paid back. And it says actually any money paid will not be returned. Um, and basically, and if you cancel on us, you have to pay the rest of the agreement. Yeah, it goes a step farther. It's not just like if you cancel the second deposit, you don't have to pay. It goes a step farther and says if you decide to cancel, you owe us the remainder of the amount due. You you owe you owe us the balance. Yes. Um, which you know that's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, if someone's mom dies the week of the wedding, then we can give them the opportunity to be like, hey, you know, you haven't paid this final deposit. You know, your mom just died. Like, take it easy. You know, reschedule the wedding. We're not recommending what you should do with your clients. We're recommending what your what your contract should say. Yeah. So yes. you being a good human being, a compassionate, loving person, is what you should do because karma is a thing, man. And you should put yeah. out into the world what you want to receive. But that doesn't mean your yeah. contract should suck. Yeah. So we give people their money back all the time, Jared. Yeah. Yeah, like that that's actually I, I a, I, like our main thing that we do because we want to be this nice. is something that's actually happened in real life and i hope it never happens to a lot of people out there but uh i shot engagement photos for somebody and um they um ended up breaking up before the wedding so and that's happened i would not where i've shot engagements but it's probably happened three four times yeah it happens where we've booked somebody right we've booked them and then they um, they break up, you know. Actually, it's probably happened more. It's probably happened five or six times since we've been yeah. shooting over um, the years. Over the years, yeah, it's happened. It's happened a good amount. Um, one person that I refund, I gave them a full refund. We don't have to do that. I gave them a full refund because, like, I'm like this poor person. Like a lot of times, it's the bride talking to me, and I, I she'll call me. And I'll be on the phone with them and I'm like, this poor person just had this person that they loved for 10 years sometimes like break up with them. And th- I can't imagine what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to help this person out. We're going to give them a full refund. And then kind of, you mentioned karma, that same bride five, six years later, um, 
comes back and is like, hey, I'm engaged. I want to hire you guys. And this time I want to hire you guys for photo, video. You know, you're buying that kind of loyalty. Yeah. Um, you know, they were probably like obligated to go with us, but they did. You oh, know, what, what, what's so funny about this us. coronavirus thing is like, I would always be the person on the forums who'd be like, you should give them their money back. Yeah. And and everyone's like, no. And now everybody's saying yeah. we should give people their money back. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Like, yeah. Like, it's weird. It's like, I think you yeah. should be nice when you can be nice, but like, you cannot be nice in this situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Uh, it seems like a lot of people don't want to give money back when they screw up. Like, they don't want, like, it's like, oh, I made a mistake and I didn't record audio of their whole ceremony. And, and then you're like, well, you should give them a little bit of a refund to just make sure that, you know, they're not going to leave a bad you know, review ethics. or something like that. Yeah. And then people are like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, they're the ones that actually screwed up. And then, you know, now they're like, oh, you should be a nice person and give them the money yeah. back because they can't control, you know, coronavirus kind of thing. Well, it's just like <laughs> exactly people just have saying. all these like it's the same thing is like, by the way, I'm doing social distancing. I believe in it, but I don't want to hear you post about it every freaking day. Hashtag social distancing, <laughs> acting like you're some freaking like superhero. And then, uh, and then, <laughs> this, is a, this is a different conversation. <laughs> shaming people for for this thing, and I think, like, that's really what it is. Is like this is a common human experience. Yeah, everyone's going through it together, so we don't need to yeah. t- act like no, we're not all going through it together. And that includes you. Th- yeah. That includes your family. That includes your employees. That includes your future employees. By the way, yeah, you might not have them yet, and if you give everyone their money back, you definitely won't. <laughs> So that kind of leads into um, one of my rants that that I've seen. I'm just it's driving me crazy that people are like, "Oh, if you don't refund people's money, that you're actually a jerk." Like we're all in this together, which is like, I understand, and I, I've said it myself. But like, I literally had one bride reach out to me and was like, "Hey, we're rescheduling our wedding until next year." Uh, 2021, they didn't even have a conversation with me about it. And I was like, well, we have to hold to the agreement, you know, because you didn't even have a conversation to me. And that's a date next year that I'm not willing to give up. It's a prime date. And then at the end, it was like, remember, we're all in this together. I was like, this person's using this phrase against me to make me seem like a jerk. I'm like, I'm not going to help this person. <laughs> like, oh, but we'll anyways. help them the same way we help everyone else, but we're not going to. Yeah. I actually believe there's a solution that no one gets hurt by, and we should do that one. Yes, yes, exactly. But it comes down to getting in front of it again. But yeah. if you're you're not a jerk, if you're not willing to give your the retainer back to couples, like if you, I would even make an argument that you're kind of a jerk if you do <laughs> give your retainer back, because you got to think about the people that it's actually affecting. Like, uh, first of all, you at home, um, you know, listening to the podcast, like. You're being a jerk to yourself. Like you've built up this business that, you know, and and if you are able to uh, legally keep somebody's retainer because you've built a good contract, you're doing yourself a disservice. You built yourself this contract and you're just giving money away because you don't see another solution except for the easiest way is to give, give money away. But we're not in this for an easy path. It's like you're in this to make money. You're in this to provide for your family, which is kind of the second person that you're kind of being a jerk yeah. to. Yeah, yeah family members, you know, your future you're self. kind of being a jerk to them by giving money back. Um, and then the last thing, and, and, uh, you know, it's something we talk about a lot in this kind of community is you're hurting the photographer and videographer community. When you're giving money back, you're killing everybody because I had that, that one couple that I mentioned was like, well, our photographer and our band and all these people are willing to give, you know, just reschedule us on this date, essentially giving money away. And I was like, well, that hurts me because that makes me look like the jerk now. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, you're doing a disservice to the community. And I think, you know, if you're on the threads, if you're like passionate at all about growing the industry and making more money for yourself, you know, giving back to the community, what you can do to service them right now is stand by the contract that you have and find solutions other than rescheduling and just giving money back to people that would really do people yeah my recommendation for people is you really shouldn't be rescheduling anywhere past nine months from the current day um well i or i I wouldn't put necessarily um, a date on it but i I would say 
when is when are you going to be super busy? When do you know you're going to be super booked? For us, I'm like, I can reschedule all the way up to April of 2021. May of 2021, I'm going to get busy. I can't reschedule you for that date or well, anywhere in that range. And so the concept is this for us. And I actually yeah. believe for more of you than you realize. And I, I was even talking to someone the other day. And I brought up that, hey, I can't reschedule people who are at prime May dates. Like the last week of May in New England is a prime date. Yeah. If if we were to actually charge like spike rates, like demand rates, which maybe we'll do someday, who knows? It's like we, we would charge more money for the last weekend of May because yeah. there are so many people who want to get married that weekend. Yeah. And um and we know we're gonna book it. I think we have four weddings and we turned down five. Yeah. That weekend alone. And so yep. we know we're going to book it. And so by allowing a person to pay us this year for the date we, you know, the bird in hand, the wedding we have, then also take someone else's seat next year, we are literally losing $4,000 on that wedding. The, one, the other mm-hmm. way to look at it is we're shooting that wedding for free. Yep. We're making no money shooting that wedding. So for our business, if I did that 20 times, I could easily lose a hundred grand. And so yep. our numbers are, are are big, and so they make it a little more obvious what the problem is. A lot of other people, they, they're like, I only shoot 15 weddings. I only, you know, I, and I wasn't going to work that weekend anyway, and all these things. And maybe they're not actually losing money because their demand isn't super high and all this. Mm-hmm. But if that situation changed, if next, say they did a wedding this year, in the summer and it was epic and it blew up on all the blogs and they got tons of demand and then they made this stupid mistake of booking like three prime weeks for free next year they're not even going to get paid on and they can't fill them now with all the new leads they have that we're going to actually allow them to charge four times as much maybe they're brand new and next year they can actually hop up to five thousand dollars and they have a twenty five hundred dollar wedding they're giving away so much money by replacing and yeah. filling like giving that to someone for free and so yeah you have to cauterize the wound right right now is that the word cauterize Cauter- yeah that is a word uh, you you gotta yeah you gotta make the bleeding stop yes right so where is the line that you're gonna make the bleeding stop from this coronavirus outbreak and for us that was the line that was like we can do up to here. And then after that, you know, you can book Fridays. And our agreement supported Sundays that. And Thursdays. And agreement supported And of that. course, exactly. the other thing so about the like, agreements, by the way, hopefully you are also is- issuing amendments to people yeah. that they can sign that say. And one of the things we did, by the way, this is just us, is, um, and, and if you're a planner or a photographer or in your industry, probably there's different things that might change for you. We have a delivery date, right? That's based on how you know, having weddings and peak season and whatever, we might end up having a bunch of crazy weddings now in a more peak season. So we're asking people to waive that delivery date because yep. we are going to have a hard time fulfilling it probably because of, we might end up doing like six or seven weddings. Who knows how this goes or how long this goes <clears throat> on a, in a day in September that could happen to us. And we're going to have this huge, we're going to end up, we might end up shooting like, 80% of our volume from 80 from August to the end of October. That could mm-hmm. happen mm-hmm. reasonably in new England. And so our delivery date is going to be out the window. And yep. so we're, we are asking, we're waiving that. And we're also, we're upholding the agreement, waiving that. If there is a fee, we're going to have them agree to that fee, all that stuff. You do need to make sure yep. you're giving people an amendment or maybe some people I've seen are canceling their agreements, issuing a new agreement, Whatever it is, you need to make sure that they're signing something to acknowledge that they have made a change. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And that, and I think um, that's the thing too. Just kind of going back to you know rescheduling to next year um, with with doing you know if this thing like we're, we're currently you know this is very COVID nineteen conversation. Yes. But I think it's it's valuable right now. Um, you know, we don't know how long this thing's going to go. Like, we're this podcast is happening in end of March. Um, it could go into May, June, July, August, September, October. Like, who knows? You could be here a full year. Um, so if you are going to have to reschedule your full year of weddings for 2021, 
if if it comes to that point, then um, then you're screwed. You know, it's essentially you're get. So right now, it's easy to be like, okay, April weddings, I'm gonna reschedule for 2021, no big deal. May weddings, I might reschedule for 2020. But where is that breaking point where it's like, wow, I'm not getting paid at all? Yeah, you're not getting paid year. at all. Or next and year. because you're not getting paid at all, you have to go work a job at Fridays and still shoot those weddings if you don't want to get sued. I'll have to work a full year for free. Yeah, you know, depending. So for us, we we're like. We're going to draw the line right now. This is what we can do because, again, you want to be the person that's shooting out of this crisis like a cannonball and like, hey, this this is not going to affect my 2021. Like, I refuse to let it affect my 2021. Like, I work too hard. You work too hard to up- let this situation affect your 2021. Well, and that's what's so best for the economy. That's down. actually what it means to be yep. in it together is to try to normalize society as soon as we possibly can. Yep. And, 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 and I think it is possible <clears throat> to normalize it. And so like the more we can kind of help people just kind of stay the course and, um, create a clear path for them, the better. And so we say all this to say crisis will reveal whether or not your contract is any good and it will reveal yep. if it protects you at all. And our concept of our contract when we met our lawyer was like, we want to be the ones who are totally controlled. And as we've yep. given this new one out, we've had lawyers say, we don't like it. And then we go, awesome. This yeah. is what we want. And then in the middle of it, we're still nice guys and we still want to help people. And so we're always trying to find a way to, to the agreement. I can still do whatever I want, no matter what the agreement says. Yep. And so hopefully if you're able to be compassionate to people and also not screw your business, awesome. Yep. That is what we want as as business owners and as human beings. Um, so what's the last point? What's point number three to uh, determining essentially if you if you're a real business or not? <laughs> if you're, we were talking about this yesterday, and we were like, should we call this one like you have a fake business? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three telltale signs. You have a fake business. Uh, if you have a fake business you or a, not. Um, I think it's just, um, I think the third thing that a crisis reveal about your business is, um, do you have the right mindset and have you, do you have, um, like, and that really just means like, do you have a backup plan, um, Mm -hmm. for when things don't go well? And I think a lot of people don't have a backup plan. Like if, if crap hits the fan for their business, they don't have a solution. You know, like they don't have any, so given like this is going to stretch everyone. So you might be in a situation when you do have backup plans and even your backup plans are falling through now because of COVID-19. So this is a very unusual circumstance, but I think in general, most crises, is your backup plan will be able to handle it. And, um, a crisis will reveal like, do I have a backup plan? <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about our particular situation because I think I always like to contextualize it so people know, like we're trying to practice what we preach a little. Um, we were looking at the potential, and I don't think this is going to end up happening, by the way, Jared, but it could, of a lot of our weddings moving from the spring and early summer to the fall of 2020. Um, now we're trying to push people to do some other things, but but that could happen. And so we knew what does that mean for us? It means they're probably going to end up wanting to shoot on Saturdays. And we already have pretty much like most, most of our weekends from August to October are fully booked. There's a few, every, almost every Saturday from August to October, we have currently have four weddings. We're maxed out every single Saturday. So what do we do? Yeah. And so we said, okay, what's the plan? So, I'm always trying to say, how can I take a crisis and be the one to benefit? Because a bunch of, bunch of people, a bunch of other people are going to panic and they're going to give me a bunch of opportunities. Right. And that might sound savage, but I'm an entrepreneur, right? I'm a business person. I want to make money and I want my people to make more money. I want to provide career paths for young people to stay in the creative field. So I want to create more jobs for more creatives. And so I said, okay, this is a good opportunity. If I have six weddings now, and the people are willing to be a little bit more permissive and allow me to throw a newer guy on their wedding, who I also think is good, by the way, not just some someone who I think is bad, but somebody who maybe like they might go like, well, how many weddings have they shot before? 
right? People would kind of do that sometimes. And we'll say, oh, they've shot 80 weddings. They're very experienced. Well, I might be able to be like, look, he's only done like 10 weddings, but he's really good. He's awesome. And I want to put him on your wedding. And that person's going to be like, oh, in this current situation, they're going to view it. Thank God you have somebody. You have somebody, yeah. right? Um, and so we, we said, okay, let's staff up. The, also, the other thing that we're doing is we're reaching out to all our planner friends and our venue friends, and we're saying, hey, we're staffing up. So if anybody bails, anybody can't fill a date in our industry. Any filmmakers, just they're double booked and they can't change. We have something for you. And we're willing. We are to, there for you. We're there for yep. you. We're so like our hope is that by the, we're actually going to make more money this year, than than we were at, when it's all said and done. Um, be, how dare you profiteer on a crisis, Jay? How dare? How you? dare I help employ people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and so we we had a backup plan, which is like we are going to try to staff up. So we're working on that now. We're not even. We don't have it all settled. We're not, we're not, it's not the, like I, that person isn't trained up yet, but we are knowing that it's like, what is that? Five months from now that that person yep. needs to be ready. And, yep. and, and we have the guys in mind and the people and we're, we, we think they're, we wanted them to be ready anyway. So not only does this benefit us because we can make a little more money, but it, if they kill it and they do a good job, it means that we can actually book six weddings next year on a Saturday. And that brings our yep. profit way up. That could grow our business by 50%. Yep. And it's like, who knew that this crisis would be the thing that would force us to be innovative and to think about yep. our business in a different way. And we're going to grow from it. And like, this is how I know I have a real business because this business, I'm not an employee. It's, it's almost got a mind of its own, right? It's got its own situations and it's presenting opportunities to me. I just got to figure out what to do with it. And a crisis will reveal to you, like, do I even have a backup plan? If crap doesn't go well, do I even have any solutions? And if you're the only person involved, if you don't have a backup plan, what do I do if I get sick? What do I do if the coronavirus hits? What do I do? You know, you might not have a real business. You might just have a job. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you look at any, I mean, I don't think th this, this crisis is unprecedented. Um, but you look at the financial crisis of 2008 and then you look at all the people that made money off real estate from, you know, 2013 to 15, 16, 17, um, people launched out of that thing. Like they saw it as an opportunity, like they bought low and then they sold high. And I think that's what you have to do right now in, in this crisis is what are the areas that you can buy low? and then eventually sell high out of the crisis. And that for us is, is where we're at. We're like, hey, this might be an opportunity where we could staff up, we could really train people, give them real experience, and then next year, maybe we have to throw 40 grand at equipment or 60 grand at equipment, but then we have two more kits, we have six kits, and we can send out the two more shooters next year and we could make you know grow the company out of this uh, but it's also you know going yeah. alongside with yeah. we're not giving up our 2021 dates because of that and and that's not being a jerk that's just trying to you know feed our employees and make it so that they have a sustainable future and so i think the question for a lot of people listening is probably um are you going to be the person that's you know shooting out of this crisis re you know rearing ready to go or are you going to be reactive and be like, well, it's going to take me at least two years to recover from this. Yeah. Don't um, blink. Because there are other people that are going to come out of this on top. You know, are you going to be the person that's coming out on top or not? Yeah. Yeah. And it's really comes down to people who have, uh, who are prepared for crisis and who yeah. have businesses that, um, <clears throat> and, and, and you know what I really, this is a total other thing. Um, somebody brought it up and I had thought about it, but <clears throat> it's also just, like people who are starting out now, like that R5 comes out, right? You get new in the business. It's your first new real camera, the R5, the Canon R5. What? Meanwhile, this other guy, he's got like a bunch of old gear and he can't afford to replace it because he just lost all his money because of coronavirus. And so, you know, this new talented person starts out, they're a lower cost. They have a better looking product than you do because they're shooting on a better camera. And like, there's going to be careers launched out of coronavirus. Yep. People who buy an XT4 yep. or people who are just starting out as a planner and they're just as talented as the other planner and they can work for cheaper because they have no overhead. Yep. Right. Yep. Or low overhead, less overhead. And so it's just like, this is going to, 
I mean, it's going to be tough. I'm not trying to make light of it. There are some people who... This... It's, I'm not happy about This situation it. is going to define people's careers for the next five years, I think. So, you know, it's kind of deciding, um, you know, how your future is going to be. Like, this is the kind of stuff, like, you always hear, like, motivational speakers, like, talk about, you know, opportunities and, like, you know, this is the way to grow your business and be encouraged and, you know, you're going to see all these things happen to you and all this stuff. Like, this is the actual moment that you can really take it and run with it. Like this is the opportunity. See this as an opportunity. It, it might be a crisis right now. It might seem like the sky is falling right now, but there's a ton of opportunity right now yeah. that can grow your business over the next five years. This is the catalyst that can either grow or totally destroy your business. So why not make it the opportunity to grow mm -hmm. it out of all of this? Yeah. So Anyways. Yeah. So hopefully this has been helpful to you and like not hopefully mildly butt kicking, but also encouraging in the way that um, it gives you a way forward because yeah. these are easy to fix. Actually, you know, you can go change your legal structure to be like a real company. You can get a real contract that protects you. Just hire a lawyer. It won't cost you yep. as much as you think. Trust me. And it will be money well spent. It's saving us like tens of thousands of dollars right now. The fact that we hired a lawyer, trust us, it's a good idea. And like, you can yeah. get backup plans. Like if you're a photographer, you can go like, okay, I need some, I need some associates. Even if they don't work with me all the time, I need people who I'm at least, at least referral partners who I'm able to lean on, who I trust. You know, if you're a, a wedding planner, like, and by the way, brutal for wedding planners right now, cause they get paid a percentage. So they don't want those weddings to shrink. They want those weddings to stay up. Yeah. And so like, Whatever the backup plan is, if you're a videographer, whatever it is, like think about all the negative situations and like f look at all the things that this crisis is revealing about your business that don't work. Yeah. Like and go like, hey, I'm vulnerable here. I'm vulnerable here. Like look at it as a, as a blessing and take that this time to fix it. Take this time to tweak it. Change that contract. Get that associate you need. Like have that conversation with clients. Like. Even if it's just like a self-confidence thing, like I, if I can just encourage you, don't be afraid of conflict. You have to have command over that relationship yeah. with the with the couple, and it doesn't mean you're the boss. It doesn't mean it just means like you be the one to initiate the hard conversation with someone. Don't let it always just come to you. Go and and face it head on and and deal with it and have confidence that you can deal with it. Yeah. And a lot of times we're just psyching ourselves up, right? We think it's gonna go well. Yeah. We just want to hide. Don't do that. you know? I, I I think that's a really good point, and and I've experienced it a lot lately, and I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Something people say all the time is like the power of no, right? Um, it's powerful, and a lot of people, I, th I think, especially creatives, um, tend to be averse to any kind of conflict, and they think that they're doing something wrong if they encounter any conflict. And the truth is, conflict is just a part of everyday life. Like that, if you exist, there's going to be conflict in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes it's because someone's just a jerk, and then other times it's because COVID nineteen hits. So in random. The power things. of saying no doesn't necessarily mean that you are a bad person by saying no. Um, it's actually very empowering. Um, you know, yesterday to give an example, I, I had a couple who was like, "Hey, we're going to spend you know five thousand dollars on your highest tier package." Uh, we were wondering if you could just throw drone pack drone coverage in uh, for free, um, and I was like, pretty much, no, <laughs> we can't do that. And, and I explained it in, in a lot more elaborate terms, at why we can't do that. But at the end of the day, um, I told them no, that I, I just simply couldn't do it because uh, we have overhead in order to be able to cover that stuff. So um, saying no is powerful, and, and I think that. Um, you shouldn't be averse to it. And you know, this couple specifically, they came back and they, they came back and said, um, okay, that's great. You know, let us know, send us the agreement, uh, with drone coverage for the extra money, you know, and, and, and they're not wrong for asking and you're not wrong for saying no. So, um, just know that it's okay to say no at the end of the day and, yeah. and you'll be totally covered. We're not usually yeah. like the self-help podcast, but I will say in this case, believe in yourself. I think we're all self-help. In yeah, this probably. Well, no, we're not the yeah. <laughs> the nicey nice. Not one. motivational speaker, you know, self help. But uh, but I think in that case, yeah. Um, but I would say, as true. a motivational person, like you have a little confidence, believe in yourself. Like, 
and and don't always be worried it's not gonna go well but like have the confidence to know like um i'm a big believer put out into the universe what you want to receive say the things that you want um the and take command over your life do not let other situations run your life including COVID 19. so if you're sitting there nervous and afraid um, i would say strap them on um and take control of this and figure out where the opportunities are one of them is of course you get better get a real contract get a lawyer get a cpa figure your crap out be more professional you have an opportunity to grow and if you're experiencing pain right now you can feel poor me or you can be real about it that it's probably your fault you caused it you you didn't cause covid-19 but covid-19 didn't write your contract covid-19 didn't isolate you and keep you in a place where you know no one who can help you fill your dates so you can still profit off of them like that was yep. you so you yep. have an opportunity yep. to improve yourself and grow yourself um anyway yeah, hopefully you it, learned a little bit from this yeah i was just gonna mention before we, we we sign out jay you know this is a real opportunity like and and you mentioned it in some of the chats that we've had to grow and to learn and you know you might not be able to forecast as much as we can because we just see how you know the ebb and flow of seasons every single year and how we can shift and make more money simply by doing something little um but i'm taking this as an opportunity to grow myself personally like grow your skills like you have time being at home you know maybe around kids or whatever um you know take this opportunity to get a linda account or a creative live account or, you know, check out the videos on wedding pros maybe and try to grow yourself and grow your strategy. Um, the, the thing that you don't have during the year is usually time, right? Now you have an abundance of time and no opportunities to make money. Now is the perfect time to educate yourself. Learn about something completely new. Read a book, um, as I'm sure a lot of you are. But just take this as an opportunity to grow your business. Read a business book. Read, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, this is really an opportunity that you can grow and grow your business, even if you're not making more money at this time. So yeah. Be encouraged, guys. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, and I, subscribe. Go ahead, Jay. Hit the buttons that you're supposed to hit. Like that. Do you, I mean, you know what? A long time I didn't realize that their subscribe button was not the same as the alert button. Oh, yeah. There's a bell. Yeah. Yeah. But I was it's just like, oh, I subscribed. But you also have to hit the alert button so you know when new things are uploaded. So definitely subscribe, yes. hit the alert button. If you haven't checked out our other content that we do besides the podcast, it's more video centered, but definitely check that out. Um, and let us know what you're doing during this COVID crisis. Join the Facebook group, join the discussion because we really want to hear from you and we want everybody to survive and actually thrive through this COVID-19 crisis. So um, have an awesome day, guys. Thanks for checking out the Wedding Pros podcast. <laughs>